because we have more options than ever before when it comes to the gear that we play especially when it comes to guitars. Take the Gibson Les Paul, for example. What are the differences between the most affordable, least expensive model and the least affordable, most expensive model? In today's video, we're gonna talk about the five levels of Gibson Les Paul. We're gonna talk about the differences, who each level of guitar is for, in my opinion, and which one I would buy if I were in the market today. So today's video is sponsored by Sweetwater. It's currently guitar month at Sweetwater, so be sure to check the description below for links to the five different Les Pauls that I'm gonna be playing in today's video. And while you're down there, you can enter the giveaway to win this brand new Gibson USA standard that Sweetwater is giving away. A quick note about giveaways. There's a huge problem on YouTube right now with scammers in the comments claiming that you've won a giveaway. That is not me. I will not be responding in the comments to anyone telling you that you've won the giveaway asking for your information nor will you be asked to pay any kind of shipping rate or anything if you win if you see any of that stuff please report it so huge thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring today's video now let's jump in and take a look at the five different Les Pauls we're going to be talking about today So first up, we've got the Epiphone Les Paul. Now this guitar, at the time of filming this video, is retailing for $649 US, and I actually have to say, for that money, you're getting quite a bit. Uh, you're getting Alnico pickups. These are the Pro Bucker Alnico uh, Epiphone pickups. You're getting CTS pots in here, so proper high quality electronics, uh, a tunematic bridge, you know, everything you want from a Les Paul with a few drawbacks. Because this is an import guitar, uh, you're not getting a nitrocellulose finish. You're getting what they're just calling a gloss finish, which is polyurethane, uh, which is not my favorite thing. But other than that, I mean, this guitar really punches way above its weight class. And I think you'll see once I start playing the other Les Pauls. This thing does everything you want a Les Paul to be. Now, because it's a 60s Les Paul, the 60s spec, it's got a slimmer neck profile than what I like. But 
That is somewhat historically accurate. If you look at the original bursts from 58, 59, and 60, as the guitars went later on in years in terms of production, the neck profile slimmed out. So it's commonly accepted that your 1960 style Les Paul reissues have a much slimmer neck taper than, uh, well, at least what I like, but that's subjective. Overall though, I have to say for 650 bucks, this guitar punches way above its weight class. Okay, so now we're moving into our first American-made Les Paul of the five levels. And this is the Gibson USA Les Paul Tribute. So this is made in Nashville at the USA factory along all the other USA-made guitars. Not in the custom shop, that's different. Uh, but for $1,299, you're getting an American-made Les Paul that's actually quite a bit different than the Epiphone that we just checked out. Now, this still ticks all the Les Paul boxes. Mahogany body, maple cap. Uh, double humbucker setup, but that's kind of where the similarities between this and a standard end. First of all, the finish. This is a satin nitrocellulose finish. Now, I have to say, I like this finish a lot. This is one of my favorite styles of finishes that Gibson does uh, for a few reasons. One, it's very, very thin, so you don't have a ton of finish on top of the guitar. Now, we can sit in the comments and argue about the effect that the guitar's finish has on the overall tone, but I know how it feels. And to me, this satin nitrocellulose finish feels really nice. The neck uh, is nice and smooth. It feels worn in. Now, Gibson is cutting out some features to get you close to that $1,300 price point. First of all, is binding. Now, binding a guitar is a really time and labor intensive process. It costs a lot of money to put binding on a body and a neck. So by getting rid of it with this guitar, they're saving you some money. Uh, they're also not, you know, dyeing the neck and dyeing the back like they typically would with a Les Paul. They're just shooting a color coat on the top and they're not giving you the best pickups. This has the 490 and 498T in it. Now these, I have to say, are my least favorite humbuckers that Gibson makes. My first Les Paul that I ever had, which was a 2001 Les Paul Custom, came with these pickups and uh, they're just not my cup of tea. Now for level three, we've got the Gibson Les Paul Studio. Now the studio model is quite famous, it's been around for a long time. Uh, and for $300 more than the Tribute, you're getting a few differences. So this guitar retails at $1,600. Now it's got the same pickups as the Tribute does, it's got the 490 and 498T. Uh, but I think the main differences between the Studio and the Tribute really come down to the finish. This is a gloss nitro finish. And as you can see, they're also finishing the back and uh, the back of the neck where they weren't with the Tribute. Now for the $300 price difference, you're not just getting a different finish. Uh, they've also included coil splits in both of the pickups. So you have uh, push pull pots on each one of your volume controls here. And with that, you can basically take these humbuckers from a humbucking pickup to a single coil, which is a nice touch. <laughs>
we're jumping up into the Gibson USA Les Paul standard 60s spec. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you may recognize my Les Paul. Uh, it is the sister to this guitar that I'm holding. This is the 50s spec from 2019. Now, mine's been pretty heavily modded. I put a bone nut on it. I've replaced uh, the pickups three times. Uh, I've installed a treble bleed in the neck position. We've also replaced the plastics with uh, vintage correct 59 style plastics. But outside of that, it is essentially the uh, 50 spec version of this guitar. Now jumping from a Les Paul Studio to the 60s standard is A, quite a big price hike. This retails at $27.99. And for that, you're getting a bound neck, a bound body, you're getting the classic 60s style inlays. Uh, but the biggest difference is gonna be the pickups. These are Burst Bucker 61s in here. Uh, still CTS pots, CTS wiring, ABR, Tunematic bridge. If you're looking for the classic Les Paul formula, um, this is it. Last but certainly not least, we have the Gibson Custom Shop Murphy Lab 59 reissue. Now this is the Murphy Lab Ultra Light Age. If you know anything about the Murphy Lab, you can get different levels of relicking, different levels of aging. Uh, and this is the lightest aging that they do at Murphy Lab. And for that, you're gonna pay $7,499 US, so 7,500 bucks. Now going from Gibson USA to the Custom Shop is quite a difference, not just in price, but what you're actually getting for your money. First of all, Custom Shop is a different building. It's a different facility altogether in Nashville, different staff, uh, different crew. And with that, there's a few differences in production. First of all, it's a smaller, slightly more hands-on production than you get at the USA factory. Um, they're still using machines and CNC's and things like that to build the guitars, but this is a much more hands-on process than what's happening over at USA. The other difference is in the wood choice. Typically, the wood that Custom Shop is getting is a bit higher quality in terms of its weight, in terms of its grain structure, specifically on things like the tops uh, than what you're gonna get at USA. So if you want super figured, super flamey tops, if you're into that kind of thing, uh, Gibson Custom Shop is the way to go. Now Murphy Lab takes it even a step further from typical Custom Shop stuff in a few different ways. A, the, the finish, the actual nitro formula that they're shooting is Tom Murphy's own formula. They're also using his aging techniques, uh, things like that. So this guitar, for all intents and purposes, is as close as you can get to a real 1959 Les Paul from Gibson without spending two, three, four hundred thousand dollars, five hundred thousand dollars, whatever it is. You're spending less than ten. And that's the appeal of something like a Murphy Lab or a custom shop. If you want to get as close as possible to the real thing, this is where you gotta go. Now for that money, first is the USA, you're getting different plastics, you're getting more vintage correct stuff. Obviously you're getting the different finish, uh, but you're also getting custom bucker Alnico 3s. Now these are my favorite Gibson pickups. These are modern recreations of PAFs, patent applied for. And this is a subjective thing, but I love PAFs. That's what I want out of pretty much any humbucker. And these do a really, really good job. This guitar sounds amazing.
So how did these five guitars stack up against one another? If you're in the market for a Les Paul, which one should you get? Or which level is right for you? Now I will say the fit and finish on all five of these guitars has been excellent. Everything from the Epiphone to the Murphy Lab. And I think there's two reasons for that. One, I genuinely believe that the new Gibson uh, has made huge step forwards in their attention to detail, their build quality, and their quality control. The other reason for that is because these guitars came from Sweetwater, they went through Sweetwater's 55 point inspection process and setup process. Now, I know that this video is sponsored by Sweetwater, but this is actually not part of that sponsorship. I've seen uh, their guitar section firsthand in the warehouse, and I've seen the inspection process that all these guitars go through, and it's genuinely impressive. Overall, the guitars have been great. With that said though, what is in the number five spot? For me, it's the Les Paul Studio. At 1600 bucks, this guitar sits at sort of a weird price point, and honestly, I'm not quite sure who the studio is for. You're more expensive than the Tribute model, but you're not getting that much more for your money. Yes, you have coil tap pickups. Yes, you have a more complete finish overall, but it's not enough of a step up towards a standard, I think, to justify the price. It's still got the same pickups, it's still a chambered body. And on the pickups, the 490 and the 498T, in my opinion, need to be changed. If I bought this guitar, this is the absolute first thing I would do is go out and spend a few hundred bucks on a really good set of PAFs. So overall, yeah, it does the Les Paul thing, but at 1600 bucks, I find it hard to justify the cost over the tribute uh, for Something that's just not that much of an upgrade in my opinion. Now, in the number four spot, we have the Tribute. I really actually like this guitar a lot. I love the finish. Like I said, Gibson's satin finish that they do on this line of guitars, as well as uh, like Rick Beato's new signature uh, Les Paul Special, this is one of my favorite things that Gibson does. It's super thin, uh, it's super light, and it feels really nice. The satin finish on the back of the neck feels great. I also love the look of this guitar. I think this looks better than the Studio. And it's something a little bit different. If you're looking for something that's not just a straight ahead Les Paul standard, the Tribute series is quite unique. They do several different finish options, which I think are really cool. And instead of spending $1,600 on the Studio, I would spend $1,300 on this and put a really great set of PAFs in it. I mean, this guitar is super resonant. It's super loud. I think this is a really great example of the, uh, the Les Paul Tribute. And overall, I really dig this model. For $1,200, bucks, you are getting a hell of a lot of guitar, and uh, it does the Les Paul thing. Now, in third place is the Epiphone. This guitar really impressed me. For 649 bucks, you're getting a guitar that competes with the Studio and the Tribute. It sounds just as good. I think it looks a little bit better than both of those guitars, especially if you are after sort of the more traditional Les Paul look. Yeah, it's got a polyurethane finish instead of nitrocellulose, and again, that's not my favorite thing, but there are some ways to sort of improve upon that. Like I would sand down the back of the neck to give this a satin finish to make it feel a little bit better. I would also probably change the nut to a bone nut, which is something I would do on the Tribute and the Studio as well. And for 650 bucks, you could completely gut this guitar and do new pickups, new pots, new caps, new switch, new everything, and be still within the same purchase price of the Les Paul Tribute, depending on what pickups you went with. That's sort of the beauty of the Epiphone platform in general. That's what I did with my Casino a few months ago. Put some really great Lawler Dog Ear P90s in it, and that guitar sounds unbelievable, especially for the amount of money that I have invested in it. So the reason this is third place for me is, unless you have to have Gibson on the headstock, I would recommend this over the other two that we've looked at so far. It's great value for money, it's a really great guitar, and if you can get over that Epiphone logo on the headstock and the fact that it's made in China, I mean, this is a really good Les Paul. Okay, so number four. You might have guessed what I'm gonna pick for number four, but you might be wrong. It's the Murphy Lab. Now, this is an incredible Les Paul, and this is everything I look for in a guitar like this. For me, the Les Paul is a staple guitar. It's something that I use a lot. I, I rely on this sort of mahogany, maple cap, double humbucker sound a lot. It's pretty crucial to the styles of music that I'm into. So in my mind, the cost of this guitar, the 7,500 bucks, it's worth the money to step up into the custom shop, to get into the Murphy Lab for the finish, for the pickups, for the build quality, everything about it, in my mind, is worth stepping up over the USA standard. But the reality is we're really into the law of diminishing returns here. This guitar is maybe five 
10% better than the USA standard, maybe. And the reality is you've probably said it to yourself at some point in this video, it's pretty difficult to hear the differences between something like this and the standard or even the Epiphone. The differences really show themselves when you're playing it. This guitar to me feels like I want a Les Paul to feel. It's the right weight, it's super resonant, it's super loud. I love the neck profile, I love the pickups. The finish feels right. Everything about it feels like I want a Les Paul to feel. But the reason it's not first is because of the cost. For most people, I don't know that I could recommend shelling out the extra several thousand dollar difference to go from the USA standard to this. You really have to be a certain type of player with a certain type of mindset to be able to justify the cost of something like a Murphy Lab Les Paul. But if you're the type of player that wants sort of the purest form of Les Paul, uh, something that is as close as you can get to a real vintage burst, then I think the cost is justified. But if you're not that player and you're not looking for the most accurate recreation of a vintage Les Paul, then it's gotta be the USA standard, either the 50 spec or the 60 spec. Now having played both of them, they're great. I prefer the 50 spec, but the 60s is just as good. Uh, this does have a switch tip with it, by the way. I just haven't pulled it out of the case and put it on. In my mind, the USA standard is the best all around Les Paul that Gibson makes today. It ticks all the boxes. It looks like a Les Paul. It feels like a Les Paul. Most importantly, it sounds like a Les Paul, but you're less likely to break the bank spending money on something like this than you would over a custom shop or the Murphy Lab. Now, this is still expensive. 2,800 bucks is a lot of money for a guitar. It's a lot of money for just about anything. But for that money, everything is there. The fit and finish is great. The build quality on this example is very, very good. I love the pickups. The uh, Burst Bucker 61s are fantastic. I really don't think you would even need to change these pickups unless you're like me and you just want to mod stuff and want to see what the differences are. This guitar comes out of the box ready to go. If you're looking for a Les Paul, sort of the classic Les Paul sound and feel, and you don't want to spend the money on a custom shop or a Murphy Lab, the USA standard is about as good as it gets. And don't forget, you can win this actual guitar. We're giving this one away, the 60 spec USA standard. To enter in, uh, check out the description box down below, follow the link down there. Again, don't follow any links in the comments. I'm not gonna be in the comments uh, mentioning anything about the giveaway or responding to anyone about the giveaway. Those are scammers, please report them. I wanna know how you would rank these five guitars based off of what you saw and what you heard in this video. Let me know in the comments section down below. Once again, huge thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring today's video. These five guitars will be available uh, on Sweetwater's website. I'm sending all of them back. Uh, if you wanna know more about these models uh, and these particular guitars that I use in today's video, there are Sweetwater affiliate links down in the description box below. And if you're not subscribed, which according to my analytics, still over 60% of people that watch these videos on a normal basis are not subscribed, please do so down below. This is a series. I've already got the next five guitars for the next five levels of video here at the house. So uh, you'll want to be subscribed to catch that. My name is Retschel. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, and remember, there is no plan B.